fighter jets. We were just talking about tanks. That's a crystal ball. That's who that tweet is from. We were just talking about tanks. He sort of, he threatened me at one point and said, you know, uh, Boris, I don't want to hurt you, but uh, with a missile, it would only take a minute or something like that. I've been doing a bunch of one minute videos, but I've decided to do something a little bit longer today. I need it a little bit longer than a minute because we're going to talk about mostly F-16 fighter jets. And you can only imagine where those might be going, but we'll get there in just a second. I have been noticing a lot of states uh, wanting to sue the big tech companies. And when you look at this on the outside, a lot of times it just looks like Republican states that are suing these uh, tech companies. But um, it's happening for a good reason. I, they're talking about the harm that social media is having on children and this is not a new topic this has been discussed for years i think we all kind of know that social media is bad for children under a certain age um quite frankly it might be bad for a lot of adults so to think that children can handle it uh might be a bit much so you got different states that are suing and there might actually be something that comes of that because we got over here the Surgeon General saying that children 13 and younger probably should not use social media. So it says right here that Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter allow users age 13 or older on their platforms. TikTok does allow users who are younger than 13 on their platforms with some type of safety settings. You got Seattle Public Schools also filing lawsuits against these companies. And you have to understand the reasoning for this because these are developing minds right here. So if we tell a child, use the force of your willpower to control how much time you're spending, you're pretty much pitting that child against the world's greatest product designers. These companies have money out the wazoo, so why wouldn't they make something that's super addictive? We all know, we all know that if you get on Facebook and you just constantly scroll, there's gonna be something that's gonna try and suck you in. It's not like things are in chronological order like they used to be on Facebook, and maybe that's a setting, but they show you the things that you're most likely going to click on, that you're most likely going to comment on, because that's the engagement. That's what keeps you on there. You're invested. But yeah, all he's really saying is that there should be some guardrails on this thing. Just talking about vehicles, how we have to make laws for those, and we, we don't really have any idea of what laws to make most of the time until things are broken or thing like people start suffering then that's where the laws start to come in now granted laws on this could have been around a lot sooner and then also you could just put two and two together as to what's going to happen with this if you just give children the ability and access to all of the world's information and people i like the analogy uh that's used in here about it being like uh, oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> this next one. So, at Steph is Dope says, parents should have a deeper connection, mutual respect, slash understanding, thus more influence over their children than social media. It's a parent's job to be a guide for their kids, not to just throw them to the wolves in this digital wilderness. That is a great analogy. A digital wilderness. Because the parents have no idea about what's out there. And, um... There are some wolves out there. There are just people that want to consume. And one of the things that they consume is other people, sometimes literally, but I'm mostly just talking about just using people to serve their own purposes, for their own financial gain, for their own personal satisfactions. You gotta be careful. We would not dream one time about putting a kid in the middle of a forest and then just leaving the kid. That would be ridiculous. So yeah, I'm really not opposed to you know, what he's saying here, quite frankly. There probably have to be more constraints on it put for even older children. Yeah, you got people that are just tearing each other apart. People have confidence issues. You know, there's not a lot of body positivity you know, going around. <laughs> These kids talking to each other, dogging on each other on social media. Um, and they get rough. They get rough. If, if you don't really know how children are, oh my God, play video games. You'll know in a heartbeat how rough children are.
Love me or hate me, hate me or love me. Most of us should be on the same page with this next one, Patriots. Schools in the South and rural America. We are only as good as the children we educate, and we've fallen greatly behind. Case in point. West Boulevard High in Mississippi, a state lacking 3,000 teachers, lacking the local talent they need to help staff its schools. Rival sports teams merge together. Teachers are teaching two different lessons to two different classes and two entirely different schools. Children are even teaching themselves. There's no funding for science labs, no challenge for any rising star students, no band teacher for years, historically low teacher pay, and a superintendent that refuses to give up on the kids at his schools. The future of everything isn't here or here, it's here. And to underfund it, to not support it, or to turn a blind eye to it is just plain wrong. Okay, it's that time again. Let's take a look at some of your comments. Wanda De Leon 2044 says, Okay, you want to go there? Really? What about the others? Hunter's laptop, fuel pipeline turnoff, all the money they're making with our taxes. Should I go on? Not a side I want to be on. Trump made jobs happen for us. He's the only president whose income decreased by not accepting pay, but donating his money. Wanda, that's adorable. I truly do believe that you believe that, no doubt. But don't you think he changes laws in order to benefit himself? Yeah, not taking that check for being president, that unimaginable $400,000 a year. I'm pretty sure he's willing to trade that in order to gain millions, or dare I say billions, in write-offs for his taxes and other opportunities later down the line. He's not focused about that little check, Wanda. He's focused about the end game. To all the MAGA mamas out there, I'm about to make you cream your jeans. Trump is right. About social security, at least. You gotta give credit where credit is due, and broken clocks are right twice a day. At first, I saw the title and thought, oh, he just means don't talk about it during the debt ceiling fight, like for strategy or timing. But in a post on Truth Social, his heart grew three times bigger or some he says, under no circumstances should Republicans vote to cut a single penny from Medicare or Social Security. Cut waste, fraud, and abuse everywhere that we can find it, and there is plenty of it. But do not cut the benefits our seniors have worked for and paid for their entire lives. Save Social Security, don't destroy it. Well, that's some patriotic sh right there. Moving on, let's talk about fighter jets. Now, this article down here is not about fighter jets, but just talking about the general incompetence that <laughs> the people that run our country have sometimes. Yeah, we're not talking about classified documents right now, but just my quick take on that is, uh, yeah, they have a responsibility to keep those documents safely. And if they can't do that, maybe they shouldn't hold the office. Fighter jets. We were just talking about tanks. That's a uh, crystal ball. That's who that tweet is from. We were just talking about tanks. They were talking about how, no, we, were, we weren't going to send any in, and then it became, well, some people want to go in. Germany doesn't want to have everyone send their tanks in unless the U.S. goes in. So we send the tanks, and the Germans send the tanks. But now it's immediately, like, the tanks, look, the, it, things don't happen super quickly, right? And I, I made a video about how we keep getting dragged into larger and larger commitments. And we just made a serious commitment with the tanks. But immediately, it, it's beggars to choosers in 60 seconds. And I know they're fighting a war. They're fighting for their survival. They're fighting for their very lives. But we're basically handing over our arsenal. Like, we're, we're fighting a war right now. It's just not being done by Americans. It's being done by American armament. We're sending them enough to wage a war on a major power. Well, defend against a major power. Now, if we're talking about fighter jets, we're, we're talking about quite a bit beyond anything that has ever been discussed. Because one of the big concerns is that if you give the Ukrainians the ability to strike Russia, like Russians in Russia, that is going to be 
probably the biggest escalation that we will see in this conflict. Who knows what will happen? Who knows what Putin will do? The dude doesn't seem to be making the best decisions lately. Kind of like Elon Musk. He said, Boris, you, you say that uh, Ukraine is, is not going to join NATO anytime soon. He said it in English, anytime soon. What is anytime soon? And I said, well, it's, it, it's not going to join NATO for the foreseeable future. Uh, you know that perfectly well. It, it, it fundamentally, it wasn't about, you know, he, he sort of, he threatened me at one point and said, you know, uh, Boris, I don't want to hurt you, but uh, with a missile, it would only take a minute or something like that, you know. Uh, you know, jolly. Uh, but I think from the, the very relaxed tone that he was taking, uh, the sort of air of detachment that he seemed to have, he was just playing along uh, with my attempts to get him to negotiate. Yeah, fighter jets, what's to stop them? If Russia just sent over a barrage, and I'm not blaming the Ukrainians, you know, for doing this if they were to have the fighter jets, but what, what, what is to stop them if they got hit really hard by Russia from just saying, you know what, F it. We're taking all the planes and we're just going to hit Moscow right now. I mean, yeah, there's air defense and all this other stuff to consider. That leads us to this next tweet. I'll take a look at this article as well. So to be able to employ the F-16 effectively, Ukraine would have to achieve some degree of air superiority. This means Ukraine would have to destroy Russian S-400 air defense systems first and foremost, and probably S-300s too. So really uh it, obviously russia is not going to leave itself open to attack so it has air defense and it probably has air defense that can rival a great many nation so just giving them the planes as this next article puts it is not enough but it's asking our fighter jets next which quite frankly at this point they probably are they're, they're probably the deal's already being made probably but just taking a deeper look into this, uh, some bits that caught my eye. You know, everybody, you know, said that the tanks were off the list, but you know, they got those. Little pressure didn't really take all that much to send them the tanks. The Netherlands over here, they are eager. They are ready to send in some F-16s. They say that when it comes to things that the Netherlands can supply, there are no taboos. I can appreciate that them just taking a stance and just you know committing to that stance rather than doing this thing that we're doing by saying oh no 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 we're not going to get that involved and then we're, we're just like okay we'll get a little more involved and then a few months later all right we'll get a little more involved and it's not even months in between these decisions it's more like weeks <laughs> that we keep sending aid packages to ukraine because these are expensive things even though if they were yesteryear's plane they are still expensive and sophisticated marvels of technology but if there's a missile defense system that the ukrainians can't take out they can't really get that close to the hot spots and provide support i mean they can shoot down missiles they can do that it says here that they wouldn't be able to protect their ground troops that effectively because of those uh, air defense systems. And then let's just get to this point because they're, the, the Ukrainians are using Soviet, Soviet era MiGs and these are a step up from that. They're, they're more complicated and you would need a good support system around it. You need people to repair it, to help, you know, to help maintain it. You can't just set the plane down and just fly it over and over again without having crews work on it because there are so many literal moving parts. When it comes to the training for the pilots, it will range anywhere from a few weeks to several months, uh, depending on their experience. And so that's a few weeks, like a month or two months, for their most experienced pilots to learn this new system. Uh, what, what about the people that are, are not that great? Well, I can't say that they're putting too many not that great people in the air, but who knows what they have, really? They're not very forthcoming with information in this direction. It talks about the uh, bases that they use to house the planes being rough in terms of their surface and reasonably short. You gotta be able to land safely 
We're not just handing things over for them to just use however. You would expect them to actually have them in an environment that would not lead them to unnecessary damage. But then it has this section of political will. And I don't even, I mean, I've read this, but I, I you got uh, the Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, saying that, uh, yeah, the plane, the jets are never going to happen. But I can't even believe that because all these people, President of the United States, Olaf Scholz of Germany, said that tanks were off the table. So what, what's the point in saying that they won't do planes? They won't do planes under the circumstances of right now, but if pressured enough, eventually that will will fade. Eventually Russia decides to just go ham on Ukraine. And yeah, that people are going to give. But right now, the support for any further aid to Ukraine, especially one as severe as fighter jets, is split about 50-50, I think I read. But um, yeah, take a look at this. You know, what do you think? Should we, should we even be doing this? Um, uh, how much further should we be going? Is there any point? Is there any point where if Russia pushes things even further, is, is there a point where we would say, nope, that's it. It's too much. We're going to stop. Because if there's no point like that, we might as well just go all in. Because eventually we're going to get there. But rather than being able to throw all of our weight at once and give our hardest hit, we're essentially you know, being killed by death by a thousand cuts. We're short on javelin missiles or running out of our more antiquated things to send to Ukraine in order for them to defend themselves. So then what's next? How long will this conflict go on? We cannot supply another country's war forever. Well, we can, but we really shouldn't. Anyway, tell me what you think. Subscribe.